great content takes a long time to create. And so how do you be super strategic with it to make sure that it reaches the right type of people in a way that lets them know that you are specifically the person to work with them? That's what we talk about in this hot seat conversation with Landon, who is a trans coach. And we really break down exactly what he's trying to do. And it gets very, very tactical at the end. Like, I even tell him how to talk about how how to work backwards into like topics that have hit hard in the past, how to create more pieces of content around that and think through the ideation and then think through the promotion specifically down to who to target or who to reach out to, to get that content shared. And what a lot of people do with content, which is, I think, backwards, is they create content and then they look for people to share it with. I actually think that you should know who you want to share that content first, and then you create content with that person in mind. And we talk about this with Landon, so I hope that you really enjoy this uh, this quick conversation with him uh, from my hot seat. It was it was interesting for me. I learned a few things, but also um, I think you'll really like how the, the kind of backwards process of how to think through more strategic content because yeah it takes a heck of a long time to create so enjoy hope this helps landon what's up dude um i did not uh if you filled out the form i i haven't seen it because it, it, it wasn't there when i jumped on the call um I submitted it right at the very beginning of the call probably yeah, so I, I, sorry, sorry, I'm not able to look at it. Um, but that's cool. Uh, if you can tell me, Landon, real quick, who you are, who yep. you serve, and what we're talking about today, that'd be cool. Uh, yeah. So, um, I'm Landon. I help LGBTQ plus uh, individuals build muscle, strength, and confidence without toxic bro culture or strict diets. So that's my tagline on my social media. So um, things have been going, you know, really well. I think what works great for me is just that I have like an automatic niche uh, to tap into that's really unique. And, you know, people kind of have that automatic trust when we have like a similar uh, identity, right? So um, I kind of share some of the thoughts that like Nick mentioned earlier, uh, you know, maybe like for me, like some scarcity mindset, it feels like also, you know, what uh, I think... Vanessa had said about like, um, you know, after a while, it's like the same people that engage in your content all the time. So Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm getting scared of when that time comes when I run out of people to, uh, to uh, talk to and stuff like that. And for me, it's either growing social media a little bit more or, you know, having something else where people can find me that's not uh, Instagram or TikTok. And um yeah, I don't know. I've been the most consistent this year with my social media, but it hasn't really grown that much as opposed to 2022 when I posted like once every other week. So, oh, that's funny. Yeah. Well, what were have you have you reposted some of the stuff that performed well in 2022? I I have, and what's interesting is that it won't do as well as the first time for me. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's just social media just gets busier and busier and busier. Yeah um which which i mean i find as well there's also just like weird things where every once in a while something will click and it'll be like oh for some reason the system really loves you today uh yeah. for no good reason right yeah uh i don't know maybe it was a less busy day that day on the internet and there's space now somehow uh okay so what can i help you with then like it it sounds like there's kind of a few things going on but it also kind of Sounds think, like you have, like, like you've got a lot of good stuff happening. You're just looking for it to happen in a different way. Is that right? I think one is like my social media, like creating the content. And I have somebody to help me edit videos and stuff like that. But it's like when I write the text posts, it takes me like forever. Yeah. And I don't know like how to like cut that down. I feel like it'll take me like sometimes like an hour or two of like running back and forth of like re-editing like the same text post and it's just like kind of goofy at that point that it takes that long but it's like I'm I feel like I'm always trying to find like the perfect hooks and like all this stuff and uh yeah one is just like how do I um not spend so much time generating content because you know it's like it'd be great if I could put out more uh and not you know not be stuck on one post yeah 
Yeah. I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> okay. I would love for a post to only take me an hour. You also those, spend a long time doing everything? Those, those text-based carousel posts, mm-hmm. the storytelling ones, mm-hmm. probably take me a minimum of three hours to write. Okay. Closer to four or five for a lot of them. Yeah. It, is, it is an unbelievably difficult writing challenge. Mm. Because if you think about what you're trying to do on them, right? You need a hook at the beginning. Mm. You need to sell the next slide on every slide. Mm. You have a tiny amount of space to be able to tell an entire story with a beginning, a middle of an end. Mm. And you need to have some like reason or narrative. Um, and then... You have to have a caption for the damn thing. Mm -hmm. And the caption often needs to make it personal for the person Mm -hmm. um, and give additional context and stuff. It's, it's an unbelievable, which is why I don't do them that often. They, it just takes a really long time. Mm -hmm. Um, I believe really strongly in repurposing, as you know, Mm -hmm. even if, they don't perform as well as they did originally. I still believe really strongly in repurposing. For me, it's a matter of showing up every day. Mm -hmm. It's not a matter of optimizing everything that I put out on social. I just, I just, I can't. Mm -hmm. Um, So what I even do now, like to the extent, because you've got some text-based posts, what I'll actually do is I've got, um, Alina and her husband uh, are, are VAs with me and we've got this WhatsApp chat. Mm-hmm. And what I'll do is often before the week starts, I'll just, I'll spend like 30 minutes at night and I'll go through like my Instagram and I'll speak, Oh, what am I feeling like? And I'll just send them the links to the posts. And so here you can see, I sent them this Sunday night. I don't know if you can see this, but you can see, I just sent them a whole bunch of links. Mm-hmm. Right. And then what they'll do is the next day, they'll actually download the slides and they'll send them to me as images with my caption. Okay. And so that's, right. And that way, if I decide to do something new that week, great. But if not, I just, I, I just copy and paste it into Instagram. Stuff that I've already done. And you've got a fair archive as well. Um. To be able to do that. So, I, I mean, all of this to say, I don't have an answer for you. I think that, I think it's just gotten to the point where like, it's hard. It's, it's, you, your material needs to be very good now. Mm. And that means that it's going to take a long time. If you're competing on the quality of your content, you are competing with full-time content creators whose only job is to try to become a famous entertainer on the internet. That's what they think about 24 seven. You're competing with them. You may not be competing with them for clients, but you're competing for them with them for attention online. And so I don't think it's even worth trying to compete. Mm-hmm. Um, which is why I'm now, I mean, if you talked, spoken to me two or three years ago, I probably wouldn't be, writing a book called The Obvious Choice, uh, talking on almost every single one of these calls about like, talk to me about a time when it worked. Talk to me a time, like, let's, let's, let's talk about how you can talk to 5% of your audience and not 95% of your audience and go super deep. I just think that's the only way to win the game right now, unless you're trying to become a famous influencer, in which case, um, that's your job 24 seven and you can't expect to make any money for a very long time. So where, how can you, what's your, what's your 5%? How can you attract, how can you, how can you make something for call it 5% of your audience instead of trying to make something for 95? I think that's another place where I get stuck as well. Um, and yeah, I mean, I guess a lot of people have said things that have resonated with me, like, you know, people talking about finding their voice and stuff like that. Um, it's like, I have two camps of clients. Like it's like some of my clients like need very gentle talking to like, 
they need to be told that they're doing good if they only hit the gym one time a week because otherwise they'll just stop altogether. Yeah. And then my other half of clients like are on top of it and they care and and like they respond better to more like come on like you can totally do this like you know you have to push yourself harder type of thing. Right. So so because my clients like either fall into one of these two categories it then becomes hard for me to know like I mean I don't but I don't think I don't think that that's I don't think that those are categories. I think okay. how you serve somebody after mm-hmm. they've signed up with you is specific mm-hmm. to the client. I think there's probably those two categories. And I think there's yeah. probably a bunch of intermediaries between totally. those two. And totally. I think that the same person might actually fit in different categories as their seasons of their life progresses. I know there's certainly been times in my life when I've celebrated showing up at the gym once a week and done two 15 minute sessions before bed. Mm-hmm. Um, there's other seasons in my life where I'm going five, six times a week and I'm hitting it hard Yeah, and I'm the same person. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what, what I'm talking about though, is like, is like the example, I don't were you there for, with Nick, when I was talking about with Chris with the restaurants mm-hmm. and when showed up. So that type of thing, like what are, I mean, you have a very specific audience, mm-hmm. They've got probably some pretty specific quirky interests and things and communities and whatever that they're a part of. Can you think of one or two of them that kind of jump out? Um, I mean, like, it's like everybody wants or, or like people talk about like, uh, you know, getting like gender affirming chest surgery a lot. So it's like that is like a thing that I work with a lot of people on. Say that like, again like people getting like a gender affirming chest surgery. So gender affirming uh, chest surgery. What does that mean? Yeah. So like getting your like breasts removed, for example, um, okay, to become a more masculine person. So that happens a lot in the community. And I work with lots of people on getting ready for that and recovering for that. Uh, So that's not like everybody in the community, but that's like a very specific niche. And have you ever seen content pieces around fitness and stuff for that um i have from other other trans coaches but i think it's like in the broad sense of things probably pretty rare all right what do you what are what are can you give me like a quick hit, like one or two things you really need to know or really need to do if you're approaching surgery to prepare for it in terms of fitness or exercise or lifestyle? Yeah, I did make a video that did really well. And uh, I basically started off by saying that like doing pushups every day is bad advice for that because it's like you want to be training your core as well because you're getting up and not using your arms. You want to train your back for your posture and, you know, legs. So that way you could right. get up off of the seat without like, you know, using your arms and stuff like that. So, okay. I've done, I've done something like that before. And so it, it here's, so here's, here's your assignment. Take a piece of paper. Once we're done this call, I don't know, unless you have something else doing right away, but as soon as you can, after this call, take a piece of paper. And I want you to write down everything people do wrong as they approach the surgery, okay. everything that's potentially damaging that people do after the surgery where they're misguided. Mm-hmm. And then as many points or bullets as you can think of, of things that people should do instead. And then you can go deeper into those bullets. For example, like how to train your core as you're approaching gender affirming surgery. And then what you can do is you can actually, because you know that the hook is there, right? Mm -hmm. You know that the hook of everybody's trying to do push-ups when they shouldn't. So you can actually use a very similar hook for all of these videos. You can be like, everybody tries to do push-ups as they're approaching the surgery and they shouldn't. Instead, they should be working their core. Here's three tips to work your core as you approach the surgery. Mm-hmm. Everybody's trying to do push-ups as they approach the surgery, but they shouldn't. Instead, they need strong legs. Here's two okay. exercises, right? Like you can use the same. I think you could probably do a whole how many piece of content you think you can build off of that maybe like five six i mean i i talked to like a pt friend about making like a a series of videos for like recovery after guidelines for like when you start training again how 
you know, shoulder mobility, things like that. So, um, yeah, kind of was already working on, on something, something like this. I bet you, you could, I bet you, you could get, I bet you, your entire account could only feature content on this one topic. Okay. I don't want to though. No. Yeah. But, but my point is, you know, that this is a topic that has already hit hard. Mm -hmm. And so can you, can you deconstruct it in as many different ways as possible? And you can do this with other topics too. Like we just hit on this one. And you think that it like, it doesn't get repetitive to use the push-ups thing, like with every body part. There is a guy on the internet who literally says, go to the fucking gym right. three times a day, every single day. And he has two accounts. And he's building accounts of millions of followers. I don't think it gets repetitive at all. In fact, I think that people actually go to accounts for very specific types of messaging and it's reinforcing for them when they see that. And I actually think it's jarring when they see something else. Mm -hmm. okay. I think an account ostensibly needs to be about one thing. Mm -hmm. Unless, unless you're like a famous person, right? They post a picture of your cat and you'll get 50,000 likes. Right. Like that's not that's all what we're talking about. Um, so that's your, that's your assignment. All right. Yeah. Break and, that down. Uh, send it yeah, to me I, if I you want. Down. Okay. Sure. Send it to me if you want. All right. And I'll probably break it down into about 50 different ways. Okay. Yeah. I would love that actually, okay. because that is something like, it's like, that's when people start caring about their fitness when they're like, oh, I have surgery in five months. I yeah, need to uh -huh. train so I can recover well and all this stuff, like people that have never worked out before. So, and then you just, who are the surgeons who does this work? Um, Send the stuff to them. Okay. Who are the surgeons who do this work? What are the what are the nonprofits that support people going through these that don't have anybody in their families or lives that are able to support them? Mm -hmm. Send it to them. So become their resource. Be like, hey, I can make this video, but I can brand it to your organization. Would you like that? It's the exact same video. You just put their banner on the thing and get them to post it and tag you or do a collab with you. Okay. Cool. There's got to be. I mean, there's got to be huge communities supporting people there are, there, before, there during, and after. Of, there are a lot of surgeons too, so I don't even know who to really start with. Some, some of them do have social media presences. Probably the surgeons, I would think. Yeah, I would think. Um, I mean, my default is to go for a person mm -hmm. before an organization. If you're ever trying, because a person will be able to, um, a person will be able to share their trust with you. Mm -hmm. uh, right as a coach an organization doesn't really have any trust associated with it nobody there's no face to it yeah. and so if if there's a person even if it's like a smaller account number my guess is any any eyeballs that you get referred from them are going to be way more valuable than an organization right now i got the surgery eight years eight nine years ago from okay. my surgeon uh here in seattle and now he's like really tiktok famous is that someone it's like i've thought about reaching out to him but then i get kind of like intimidated because it's like well he has such a big presence now like you know i mean i don't know anything about him fine. but yeah if it's like he, would, i don't even think he would remember like you know things like doesn't that. matter yeah can you can you do a really strong quick video basically talking about how surgery with him changed your life and now you're helping other people and here's the biggest mistake that people make approaching surgery they try to do push-ups blah 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 send it to them do i send this to them like before i like post it myself or or like are you saying like make one just for him first or well again this is this goes into the same conversation of um i'm always considering what nodes of the network when i'm when i'm trying to produce a piece of content i'm considering where i want that content to go and who i want it to appeal to Mm -hmm. So probably post it yourself first mm -hmm. and then send it to him and also email him. Okay. I mean, I, you say he's a big TikTok guy. He can't be that big. Like, like he, like he probably sits on the toilet and scrolls through his TikTok like everybody else. 
you know, like he's a, he's a person. Um, in your world, he's an important person. Mm-hmm. But I don't think he's batting away offers for insane engagements and money and, and sex and everything like that with a stick every day. Mm-hmm. You know, he's probably just like a regular dude who's, you know, has something worth sharing. And so people are like, oh, that's cool. I'm glad that you're sharing that. Yeah. John, again, hope that you enjoyed that conversation with Landon. We really, really worked backwards, didn't we, in terms of how to how to establish the type of content that he's creating and figure out, it's like, okay, we got the hook, we got this thing that kind of works. Okay, how can we get more out of that versus trying to completely reinvent it every single time? Because I don't know about you, but content takes way too long to be able to do well. We kind of need to make sure that we're getting a lot of benefits out of it. So that was a hot seat call from my high-end mentorship. And um, if that's something that you're interested in talking to us about joining potentially, just know that we, uh, what we do, what we do in that mentorship is we help people scale. They have to be already doing, so you have to be already doing about $1,000 a month uh, through your online business, be fitness, nutrition combination, doesn't really matter. And, um, and if you want to have a conversation, see if it's right for you. Please on Instagram, I'm at it's Coach Goodman. Send me a DM that just says mentor. If you are looking for another episode to listen to in the meantime, I recommend episode 30. It's called Are We About to See the Influencer Bubble Boast? I think that trust online is rapidly diminishing. And I actually think this idea of influencers is going to really, really change. And so, talk about that a little bit in this episode, Uh, episode 30. So you can scroll back in your podcast app, wherever you're listening to this right now, just go back to episode 30. Are we about to see the influencer bubble boast? I definitely recommend you listen to that next. Enjoy. Talk soon.